Thanks. Okay. Thanks for checking out the Chrissy Bear podcast. We are on YouTube, iTunes, Spotify, and SoundCloud. Be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel and click the notification icon. And if you're on iTunes, please go subscribe and leave a sexy or creepy review on there. I will be reading the best or worst reviews every week, so long as they are five stars. I am so excited to have this guy on the podcast today. He is a radio legend and Ooh. icon and the founder of Compound Media, Anthony Kumia. How are you? Hi, Chrissy. How are you? <laughs> I, uh, yeah, I'm good. Um, I'm here uh, at, my, at my home, so I'm... Um, all is peaceful. All is safe. Yeah. Um, yeah. Apparently, there's a Twitter drama going on right now. Some kind of hacker or hackers. People think it's China. But there's nothing, uh, you know, confirmed yet. But uh, you know, Twitter has been shut down in a way so that <laughs> only the unverifieds can tweet, and all of the blue checkmark people have been sort of frozen and unable to tweet right now. What a crazy thing. I, I kind of love it because uh, I, I really don't like blue checkmark people. I used yeah. to be one when I, in my first Aww. Twitter account uh, iteration, <laughs> I, I used to be a blue check and then I got the boot uh, and I've been through so many other accounts and um, they keep booting me, uh, but n never a verified checkmark. The checkmarks are, uh, it's a status thing, I guess. So screw them. What was it like being a, being a blue check mark? Next? It was get, like, cookies uh, or yeah, it was amazing. No, there's a target on your back. It's the dumbest thing you could ever want to be because then people look at, look to you like, uh, oh wow, if we get him, then we got a blue check mark kicked off. So it's awesome. Right. Yeah, like yeah, this is a person that who who can fall, like they have a distance to fall. They're, yeah, they've yeah. you know made something with their lives. Let's get them. Right. They got a blue check. Ooh. <laughs> I saw this super funny and I don't even know what it's from. It's from a movie, but it's when like these sort of like African pirates take over and the scene where he's like, look at me. I am the captain now. What is oh, it? Oh yeah. Yeah. Captain Phillips. Yeah. Captain Phillips. Okay. With that pedophile, <laughs> with the pedophile Tom Hanks. <laughs> oh yes. The big old pedo. And there's this tweet <laughs> that I just retweeted that I love so much. And it just said all of unverified Twitter right now. And it's that guy going, look at me. I am the captain. <laughs> I'm the captain now. It's true. It's so, uh, it's weird. There was, there was some kind of a hack. Uh, it's a huge thing because they really, they got to Twitter. I don't know how whoever did this, did this, but, uh, it also, it took Trump's account, Biden's account, uh, all these really high profile accounts, and then posted something that said, if, uh, if you send me $1,000 in Bitcoins, I'll send you 2,000 back. Like I'll send you double the amount of Bitcoins back. And like most people knew that it had to be some kind of a, a hack or a scam, but they did get some people that sent their Bitcoins to Joe wow. Biden thinking that they were going to get double the Bitcoins back. If I had Joe Biden's Twitter, I would just get into his DMs and I'd be like, send nudes. You know, I would think of something. Oh, else yeah. Later. Yeah. Yeah. Something really funny. Uh, yeah. But uh, I, you know, it's a pretty big hack if you're getting the president of the United States and Joe Oof. Biden and stuff. So uh, they're going to they're going to have to uh, look at their security. I think their stock took a hit in after hours trading. Ooh. So and, and probably will take a, a, a hit tomorrow before they explain. So in my because uh, I've come up with something called investing and uh, I will buy <laughs> I will I will buy some of uh some of Twitter stock because it goes down because it'll go right back up again. Everything is all like uh, knee jerk these days. Yeah, uh, I call it investing because I started with the Papa John's pizza when he dropped the N bomb. Oh. Papa John's <laughs> stock went down. N, the letter N. Yeah, investing. yeah, yeah. Papa John's yeah. pizza stock just went took a shit. So, wow. uh, so I was like, the pizza's still good. Like nothing changed except that the numbers are still the yeah. same. The earnings are still the same. So I bought a bunch of Papa John's stock. And then within a week, it went right back where it was. I sold it and made a few bucks. So wow. that's my strategy now. Whenever someone's outraged at a company, the, the company always takes a hit. But it's such stupid knee-jerk stuff 
the fundamentals are all still the same, the numbers, and it always goes right back up. I was looking at Goya, but they're a privately owned company. Oh. Um, so I just look at those uh, things and I call it uh, investing. Yeah. Same great taste, same great recipe, just a couple more N words, I guess. Some, some great fucking racist owner. <laughs> See, yeah, yeah, whatevs. Uh, what so ifs? we'll see what happens with Twitter. Uh, that's a pretty interesting story, though. Yeah, and it kind of shows a vulnerability that potentially all of the social media platforms have. You know, if you can yeah. hack a whole whole platform, yikes! But um, it's good. That's why it's good to be on multiple things and uh, like the new yeah. ones, like Parlor, etc. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's interesting. And uh, this stuff going on with Chrissy Teigen, I know I called into the show so good. yesterday kind of as it was breaking. And then she, what happened is like she, today, she blocked 1 million people. What? She, you know, because I caught wind of it. I was like, wow, it looks like you deleted 29,000 tweets. And then she retweeted me and said, no, it's actually 60. You guys are losers. Da, 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 da. And I was like, wow, that's even more. Like who... Who deletes a third of their tweets that has nothing to hide? That's right. Innocent. Like, even if you didn't fully, fully partake, like if you know something, you're still kind of guilty. You're hanging with those people. There's yeah. photos of her with Hillary. Um, I've seen her name on some flight logs. Like, yep, yeah, ew. very, uh, very suspect when you uh, when you do something like that, and then and then when you. You block a million people. A million. She. Must How do you have, even do that? I think she had a like a, I don't know if it's a called a block chain or a block bot that you oh, okay. automatically block someone who retweets or tweets at you, which I feel like is the opposite of trying to get fans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why not just delete your entire account? Yeah. And never be on Twitter again. But uh, yeah, she's got. She's there's a whole big thing. I'm really, I believe this. Like, like, I don't think it's a tinfoil hat thing that Hollywood, Washington, the media, they are all in cahoots in this huge pedophile ring. I, I think the Pizzagate thing, they go, oh, it's been debunked. By who? The people yeah. that did it. They're oh, the ones that are saying what like- What a relief, yeah. Yeah, yeah. but, but uh, there's too many weird uh, messages with the pizza thing in it and then- this whole other thing with uh, Hollywood and, and, and this infatuation with pedophilia, it's just, it's yes. something, and there's something there. There is something there. And these weird leaks of ads and things I've been seeing over the last like year or so, like pedophilia is a fetish, you know, you should feel bad for pedophiles. They're yeah. you know, born this way or- um, It's a lifestyle ugh. choice. Yeah. Yeah, and it's like, uh, uh, so no. is murder. It's not like being born left-handed. Like, this is icky. <laughs> this is like a... If your hand is, if your left hand is on a child's penis, perhaps <laughs> it, I know is. it is. My left hand has the propensity to find I someone was, underage. <laughs> I was born this way. Yeah. yeah. Ugh, it's so <laughs> entwined, and it's like, yeah, these are the these are the people who are in, who are in a society have been like pretty much like untouchable, unfuckable. Yeah. And we weren't hearing much about Pizzagate at all um, until Trump was in office, maybe like mm. two years ago. But I never, I didn't really start to take it seriously until like really this year. And I am a little bit more tinfoil hatty type. Um, <laughs> but that's why a lot of Chrissy Teigen's tweets were so damaging because they were all yeah. pre Trump. They were all like 09 through 2014, like just yeah. not even funny and like we are we're people who understand and deal with funny people all the time the things she was tweeting out were not even it's, close to being funny yeah it was strange because you could almost have plausible deniability if it was after the story came out and you're like oh no i was being sarcastic i was goofing on pizza gate i was doing this that but to, to have it before anyone really even heard of it uh, yeah, there's something going on there. And then all the things about her tweets about toddlers and tiaras and, uh, you know, oh, I sure like watching young girls do splits. Uh, oh, I should be in jail or yeah. the weirdest. Just they're not so funny. Weird. It's almost where, like a confessional. Yeah. Where can I? Where, yeah, this isn't your diary, Chrissy Teigen. One was like, <laughs> where can I watch a teenager give birth? Is that weird? I just really want to watch a teenager give birth. And then. 
something where she was paraphrasing some other guy who oh said that God. the purest form of sexual interaction is with a 13 year old. Like how, you know, if you can make that funny, I just haven't seen anybody really do it yet. Um, <laughs> and she's not, a, she's not a comedian. I know that, but people fucking love her. People are like, oh, she's queen of Twitter. She's, she's just like everybody else. She's a oh, real boy. lady. So was that John Mayer's uh, girl or wife or something? John Legend's. John Legend. I don't know. John Mayer was um, right. That was Taylor Swift. Oh yeah, yeah, and he's totally with different. Everybody. Yeah. <laughs> So is she, apparently. Right, <laughs> right. I don't know. Um, I, just, I just say these things. Yeah, so it was it was pretty cool because like a bunch of people had very quickly written in to Compound Media to try to get my show and myself canceled, fired. Boy, um, what a... If they only yeah. knew how, like, how impossible that would be. <laughs> it's like, why, really? I'm going to start uh, firing people for content? <laughs> But what they do, especially off the air, I don't even give a shit what goes on the air. <laughs> <laughs> and I think it's it's like a great little almost wake up call to these people. It's like, even if it's just a few people going, oh, I can't, I don't have the power that I yeah. thought that I can't just annihilate somebody's voice. Like, oh, I guess this isn't working anymore. And I think the more places that start to do that, maybe it'll catch on to more of the population. Like, oh, you just can't cancel somebody anymore. People are sick of it. Wouldn't that be great? I mean, if if every company just ignored the bullshit and yeah. just said, no, yeah, we're not going to do anything. We like them. They have the freedom to say the dumbest shit they want to say, whatever. It would go away. But I don't th know what they think. I would love to see someone actually try to boycott something. We saw it with Goya. They tried to boycott it, and they sold out all over the country. You couldn't really? even find a oh. Goya product. <laughs> that, that, and I really think that would happen. I, they have this image that, uh, this impression that it's going to destroy their company name and oh my god we're going to have protesters out in front a and it's never the case so what the hell are you doing just don't bow once you bow to the mob it's over they get more power they become more emboldened and they just try to fuck more people over uh yeah, yeah it, it's disgusting and obviously that doesn't happen uh compound <laughs> that's what i've learned too is like you really can't even give an inch of remorse or, no. or like be even partially sorry because then that's uh -uh. of course that's never good enough and then everybody sees oh we can we have the you know power to turn this person or make them take it back like there was this one tweet i saw today from the emlyn theater which is this theater in uh, i think it's in westchester i did one show it's not even like they booked me i was on somebody else's produced show there and they were basically like chrissy we we liked you back when you were a self-deprecating comic we don't know why you're uh, pivoting this change in your brand you know maybe think about it and then we'd love to have you back when oh, things open God. up again like it was condescending and it was preachy and shitty and I was just like, oh, wow. Like, that was their God. response to one of my Tom Hanks tweets. I'm like, oh, I guess you're a big Tom Hanks fan then. You can't shit on the Hanks. He seems to be yeah. a guy that's uh, untouchable. You can't even comment on, on things. Uh, there have been allegations made. There's some woman that I, everybody that comes up with an allegation, though, is marked as crazy. Mm -hmm. They go, oh, that person's crazy. And it's everybody. Like, I guess uh, that, that redheaded guy from Mythbusters, whatever his name is. Oh, uh, the one who was like sort of maybe banging his sister. Yeah, yeah. And then I was like, he should start, <laughs> or she should start a show called Sis Busters. Yeah. Like, that might have been an Busters. old tweet. <laughs> yeah, that was a good one. I'm in Busters was one, whatevs. But, but um, yeah, he... He then turned around. The first thing he did, they write these long letters that go, oh, this person's crazy. That person's crazy. Jeff Ross, same thing. It's like, oh, somebody was uh, said I had sex with them. And the, well, she's had a lot of mental problems. It's They're all crazy? Is yeah. that what it is? They're all fucking nuts. And yeah. no one has ever done this uh, uh, and actually uh, done what they're being accused of. Yeah, it's like everybody's ex, ex-boyfriend or girlfriend, like, oh, everyone's crazy, <laughs> but me. <laughs> yeah, they're all crazy because, like, yeah. I mean, obviously, over the years, I've had the, uh, uh, I, I've, I've been uh, called many things, but every girl I've been with has been totally legal <laughs> <laughs> good, in the good. state of New York. I, I, I've learned all of the appropriate um, uh, 
pages of consent for uh, all the states. Good. So, you That's know, important. call me a, a creep and a ghoul, I'll fess up to that. <laughs> But any type of illegal act of a pedophilia, no, I will not fess up. I feel like when every boy turns 18, he should get a laminated card that has just the ages of every state. Yeah, yeah, every state. Because, you know, you get a little confused. New York is weird. (laughs) California is 18. New York, 17. But you can't take pictures until 18, which is the weirdest thing. You could literally have sex with a 17-year-old girl in, in New York, but you can't photograph her naked until she's 18. These are wow. things I think most people ought to know before yeah. they venture out into the world. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I know there's always been a lot of like rumors and gossip surrounding you, surrounding compound media, trolls, um, oh, yeah. you know, diff- different people who've, uh, I guess their hobby or pastime is to like put together videos um, oh, about the compound media. There's like, I think one of them is Cy Yen's Entertainment. I think Red Bar is another guy who likes to just talk about it. You know, I was hearing over the break, over our 4th of July break, uh, one of them was saying, oh, compound media is closing. You know, just confusion from like when we normally have off. And, uh, you know, and that's the thing is like these people don't know. It's such a few amount of people who actually know the inner workings. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're jerk offs. They, they've been in my life since probably since WNEW back in uh, those days. Once you get any kind of popularity, um, and uh, usually it's weird. They're turned fans. Like they used to be fans and then they turn and they feel like they have this uh, intimate knowledge of you because they've listened to so many shows and and, and they, they think you owe them something, whatever that is. I, I, I never know quite what it is, but you owe them something you're not giving them. So then they have to come after you. And uh, they've been despicable over the course of years. The best thing I've ever done is totally ignore them. I, I, I used to try to fight back. I used to get frustrated and post on Reddit and Twitter and, and other social media. And then I realized no matter how frustrated you get, just don't ever acknowledge them. I mute people. I don't even block them on Twitter. I only mute them because they still think they're getting through to you. Yeah. And they're not. I never see their posts. And I, I'm sure they're still posting. Most of them have one or two followers because their <laughs> accounts have been canned so many times. They don't really have any followers. So they're talking into the void. Uh, I yeah. don't see it. So, you know, have fun, whatever you want to do. It's like when you let kids just run around, tire themselves out. Yeah, yeah. Uh, You know, they they have done genuine damage over the course of the years, mostly to my family, though. Like my brother, they've they've gotten gigs of my brother's canceled. Oh, my God. And that's his line of work. Uh, They think when they leave the Internet that it's still some type of freedom of speech when they leave the Internet and and – uh, actually hurt people in real life that it's still just Twitter and Facebook and calling someone an asshole or no, it's real life and it's detrimental. And uh, you know, the, the, the couple of the people you mentioned uh, are, are genuine um, uh, harassers. Like they, they genuinely harass people in real life. They'll uh, call people at, at the wee hours of the morning, other people that have, been connected to me or the shows uh yeah just uh scumbags i think yeah. is the word scumbags. what is like the that you can remember maybe the worst thing that's happened to you you or somebody in your family because of the, the trolls i guess yeah getting gigs canceled things like that uh you know my brother had to um go to a lot of these club owners and sit down and speak with them personally and say look this is what the situation is. My brother does the show. He's got people that harass him and his family. I'm his brother. And uh, that's what happens. Some of them say, okay, some of them don't. I mean, and most of these guys, like, like the, the, we've seen a few of the people that have done this over the years. One was this real fat piece of shit uh, goth guy who dropped yeah. out of a heart attack in his father's basement uh, which we, we Good. celebrated. Uh, yeah. Another one was this guy who, um, got one of my brother's gigs canceled and was crowing about it on, uh, Reddit and whatnot. And then, uh, at one point, I guess he decided he was going to go to a, a store and try to rob a sound bar, like one that goes under the television and to run out to his Jeep 
and sped off in his Jeep and uh, got in an accident and his, his infant son flew out of the Jeep and died in the, oh in the street because he, he took his infant son with him to, to rob something. And then he literally jumped over his son's body to run from the police. Uh, Whoa. Yeah, yeah. So this is the what kind of upstanding, yeah. upstanding, wonderful people that are trying to spread some kind of ridiculous morality around... Uh, Meanwhile, it's like you used your infant son as a paperweight, or no, you're like, yeah. hold the sound bar. I'm going to speed Yeah, away. yeah, yeah. Your infant yeah. son f- as a fucking uh, guided missile. Uh, <laughs> oh. Fuck them all. I just, at this point in my life, like I said, ignoring has been the greatest thing. They just, you know, I don't hear them. They don't af- affect me as far as what I see. Yeah. Uh, I think I said that once, and that's what got them mad. I go, oh, they don't affect me. They're, and then they start doing things in real life. It's like, well, of course you can affect someone if you fucking go out and start fucking with their real life. Yeah. And, and they, they have no concept of what the difference between the internet and real life is. That's pretty frightening. Uh, but is, I'm at yeah. a point in my life where I just say fuck it. And, you know, they do what they do. I'll keep doing what I do. And that's pretty much it. It's interesting. I wonder, like, what is going through their minds? Like, like you said before, like they think they know you a certain way and it's like, are they seeing you grow, evolve, change, you know, at all? Cause I don't feel, I feel like you, your sense of humor has always been the same. It's not like yeah. you were like uh, an Amy Schumer who started out one way, got fans through one sense of humor and then evolved or changed or she became more political. I feel like there's more of a change there. Wh- whereas with you, it's like, what are they upset about? Just that the, just that Opie and Anthony fell apart. Like what are they? Yeah. I think that was a big part of it. Uh, Mommy and daddy got a divorce and these are the children of divorce that are so (laughs) upset that they have to lash out. That is a portion of what uh, these people's problems are. Um, It's, uh, it's quite pathetic. Uh, You know, they, they, they rarely end up, whenever we find out who they are, they rarely end up being successful people. A lot of the people that would bash my brother, as a matter of fact, um, my brother used a tact at some point where he would uh, engage them and talk to them. And then they'd be like, oh, you know, hey, dude, you know, sorry, I was just saying that. And then he gets out of them that they're failed musicians. <laughs> they could never do, like my brother plays out, he's got bands, he makes money, and they're failed musicians that couldn't do it. A lot of failed comics are the people that are pissed at myself, the show, other shows, yeah. comedians. Isn't that funny how it's a lot, I've been noticing people that give yeah. me shit, a lot of people who think they're like Twitter shock jocks, that's not yeah. even a thing. Yeah. I had a fan once, he just admitted to me that he, tell me how fucked up this is. I did a um, audition at Danger Fields um, earlier this year, and it was that that very night. I'm there one time, and this is what happens: is that I, you know, the Booker guy was a like, great job. I gave him my phone number, and he put it by the cash register. And then one of the fans, or like anti fans, saw the number up against the cash register with my name, took oh my a God. picture of it. Uh, kept it, saved it, gave it out to, you know, at least one of his, you know, sort of like Fuck troll friends scumbags. and then started to text me like very recently. Oh, this is what happened. It's like, I can't, I can't help it. I was on heroin <laughs> and it's like, uh, and yeah. this is now someone who's, he's come to the studio, like hammered, ripped, drugged out, like heckled my guests back when we had could have guests in the studio. Like this hasn't been one weird thing. This has been like five six weird things and to just you know blame it on, oh sorry i'm an addict yeah. like that doesn't yeah. mean you're endlessly you know getting out of jail free it's not an excuse like that's it's like some of the the, the protesters that that we see when they're lobbing shit at cops they're harassing they're yelling and then the second the cops pull out pepper spray or raise up their batons or go they go they go oh hands up don't shoot don't. like it's not a game you can't be a sh- piece of shit <laughs> and then do this one thing that's supposed to be like, oh, well, they're on home base. It's like a game of tag. Like, oh, they home, the stoop is home. I'm on the stoop. Yeah. You can't do anything. Yeah. It's not a fucking game. You're a scumbag. And we don't have to uh, uh, placate you. We don't have to be nice. We don't have to allow you in the studio. We don't have to talk to you. For some reason, they think, you know, oh, I love when you get this one. Oh, the free speech network. Really? 
That's like, why? Because I don't let you come to my house and shit on my floor. (laughs) Like, like I'm supposed to allow every bit of fucking shit and filth and, and, and idiocy into my life from you because I support free speech. Right. That isn't the way it fucking works. Free speech doesn't mean that you can be as as the fans and and followers and customers can be as disruptive and shitty as you like. That's not what right. free speech. That's means. not free speech. It's not a game. They come up with these rules. Like I, I usually equate it with like trying to play Monopoly with with someone who's a little too young. I remember my sister. <laughs> like my sister would want to play. Me and my brother would play Monopoly. My sister's like, I want to play. (laughs) And she's like, she's got no clue. So so the game has to, Monopoly especially, has to be played by the fucking rules. You you can't fuck around or the game will never end. So (laughs) when you're out of money, (laughs) when you're out of money, you're out of fucking money. And it's always like, no, I landed on this hotel, but I don't have to pay a what? Go to jail. No, I don't want to go to jail. I want this rule and then that rule change. don't play the game. Then get right. out. Yeah. Then get out of the fucking game. Because this type of thing they think is, is a game that they make up the rules on the fly. And if something goes bad, they change it so that it's okay for them. And there's no consequence or repercussions. Fuck off. Yeah, and just because we're a, we're a, a lot of funny comics, a lot of funny like journalist types, you know, we're into, we make like, you know, funny observations about society and the world and we're cool and, and we're fun to hang out with. That doesn't <laughs> mean that um, you can just come in and be disrespectful or that for yeah. you, the viewer or the fan, it's like the rules are different for both of us. Like we're the professionals doing this and we have like kind of a responsibility to, yeah. to turn in a quality product and to like, it just doesn't mean like they think of it as like oh like mom and dad are left and just the kids are running yeah, around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's almost a compliment, <laughs> almost a compliment yeah. that we've put together something that looks like it's very willy nilly and ramshackle. Romper room, and we're yeah. Romper room. We're all just having fun, but it's a legitimate business, and and there are certain things that need to be done and, and dealt with in a certain way. And people think they could just come up. We were talking today, me and Dave. It was hilarious because uh, apparently E-Rock put a studio audience in uh, the studio. He took stuffed animals. The wigs shirts, and the shirts. The wigs. Yeah. It's fucking hilarious. And it looked like people were there. And I'm commenting with Dave. <laughs> and we're just going, this is the best audience we've ever had. So they well behaved. They just shut the fuck up. Mm-hmm. I've had people in the middle of the show try to have a conversation with me. Oh where you're sitting doing the show. I'm, I'm, I'm interviewing someone or we're, me and Dave are talking about something and someone in the stands will actually be like, Anthony, hey, yo, yo. It's like, dude, what? Dude, we're recording. <laughs> this, is, this is the show. I appreciate that you believe that we're just hanging out and talking because that was our goal. And I guess we did a good job because you're not shutting the fuck up and think we're hanging out at Sullivan's across the street. It's like, I know there's a bar right across the street. Right. I know all of us drink during the day, but we're professionals here. Yeah, <laughs> we're doing our job, believe it or not. Uh, yeah, people are weird, man. And and I've gotten a dose of how weird people are over the course of, you know, whatever, how many years I've been doing this. And uh, I have noticed it change over the course of, of history. I mean, I recall being full of piss and vinegar back in the old days of, uh, of um, WAAF up in Boston, my first radio gig. And fans were like gold. I loved fans. It was my first thing into any type of fame. So people coming up asking for autographs and pictures. A lot of it was uh, at concerts. So, you know, you're seeing Rage Against the Machine. We're in the parking lot and the big, Ooh. like the big rock van thing. And the fans are coming up and we're giving out stickers and shirts. And that was like what I imagined radio fans were. And it yeah. was exactly what I imagined. And it was awesome. And was, then, pro- yeah, there was probably more respect because there was maybe a yes. little bit of a distance there. Yes. For some reason, you know, the piece of shit that I am and was and Opie and everything, somehow these people liked us and wanted to see us. And it was a, a it was an event. Like it was an event when we went out and did these things. And we did a lot of them at AF. It was a rock station. We were at every big concert and 
Boston and Worcester and uh, the fans were great. It mutated into something. And I still, to this point, I mean, I still put the blame on technology, <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, the internet, the ability to tell people anonymously how much you fucking hate them for some reason, critique everything, everyone that's doing something uh, better than you, uh, the ability to do that. And this thing that puts us all, I'm not saying anyone's better than anyone, but I am saying there are certain um, occupations where people want to see you. They want to interact with it's you. More access. It's, it's yeah, allowed it's a lot access. more access. A lot more access, and it's only made people more fucking belligerent. More and, comfortable and, in a way that is not comfortable. good. Yes, yeah. comfortable to be scumbags. Yeah. I mean, back in, in the old days, you had to go up to someone's face. Let's say we're at one of those shows, and me and Opie are ha handing out stickers and shirts, and everyone's around. Someone goes up, fuck you, asshole. You suck. You suck. First of all, the crowd would probably punch him in the face. Yeah. But we'd have the opportunity to go, really? Dick face? What the fuck are you doing here? Yeah. And, you just waited in line to do that? <laughs> right, right. But now it's with technology that we have in place now, you could just shit all over everything. Just shit on everyone, everything. It doesn't matter if you're, uh, you know, a shock jock or you're fucking Tom Cruise. Everyone in between. You can be shit on by a dick bag loser in his basement <laughs> uh, waiting to drop dead in his father's basement. Uh, that's, you know, that's where we live now. And it's, it, you have to deal with it. it it's and, a it's right. tough sometimes. Whereas if someone had to tell you they hated you to their face, to your face, yeah. they'd at least have to like get some, some of the nerve up to be like, oh, I'm about to have a face-to-face -face interaction. Right. But now it's like, that is gone. That feeling is gone. It's like, maybe people should be a little bit more like, yeah, the respect is gone. It's like, gone. I don't mind comfortable. I don't mind friendly. I love talking to fans. I love, especially our fans. You know, oh, they're, yeah, they're yeah, the yeah. best people. They come to shows. They come to cookouts. They're, they're just, anytime somebody comes for one of us, they're there to be supportive. And, yeah. Uh, but some of them, right. The majority of them are really good and uh, absolutely well behaved. Um, yeah, yeah. We've yeah. done gigs where you know we we're at comedy clubs and people come up, buy you drinks, they hang out, they'll say something, they'll talk a little bit. Uh, some people a little too chatty, but you know, whatever. That's fine too. They're just excited. Yeah, yeah they're it's excited. Like but uh, yeah, you you never really meet those scumbags in, at live events. Th that's <laughs> yeah. where you see people that are usually very cool. So. Uh, yeah, once they have that shield to hide behind, uh, they did, can be assholes. Did Opie sort of discover you in a way? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was uh, it was kind of a um, well, I was I was doing music with my brother and writing song parodies, and uh, you were singing or writing? Yeah, I would I would write and sing the song parodies. My brother did all the music, and uh, you know they fucking people would laugh. They'd find it funny. We would play out and do. Uh, we do songs like 70s, 80s songs back in those days. Would you do and, like Weird uh, Al type stuff or like? Well, we, we would do regular music too. We would play, yeah. you know, acoustic versions of uh, Beatles songs and then play something from the 80s. And then, But I also loved writing song parodies. So whenever a news thing would happen, I would write song parodies. We would add that into the list. And then when me and my brother would play out at a bar or restaurant or fucking docks when my parents would go boating. Mm -hmm. uh, people loved it. They loved shit like that. I did some from uh, the Joey Buttafuoco, Amy Fisher thing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, any event that would come up, we'd write a song parody about. So when OJ pulled his shenanigans, I, I wrote a song parody about that. And uh, my brother would take these parodies and just send them to every radio station. Wow. Chaz, Chaz up at PLR in Connecticut, um, Howard, uh, the, the other guys down at LIR here on Long Island, and then oh, yeah. Opie on BAB, because uh, he had one of those shows that were, you know, the wacky shock jockey thing. Uh, so Opie played it for his audience, and because Opie, like, anytime anyone sent Opie material, he's like, "All right, I got Aww. something, <laughs> I got something." So, so he played it, and people loved it. Uh, wow. So we, and he invited us to come in and perform it live. Wow. So so we went in, performed it live, and I just like was like, here's my shot. I pulled out everything. I was doing impressions. I'm doing like 
talking about the news, just everything I, I Did you wear wound like up a doing glittery on the radio. vest or something like that? I should, I should have. <laughs> no, I had the big giant afro and I was just, uh, you know, it was very strange, but I, I didn't stop. And Opie's like, holy shit, dude, can you come in Thursday? You know, wow. I'd like to have you come in Thursday. So I was coming in uh, and then I, I, I started coming in about three times a week and he was recording all this and sending it out to radio stations around the country. Um, wow. me, me and him doing radio. Uh, and we got the offer to go to, uh, up to Boston interview. We went up there for an interview. Again, I just opened all the flood valves. We're in the office with the general manager and program director, and I'm just spinning plates and fucking yeah. drums and squeaky horns. Like everything, <laughs> I pulled out everything. Yeah. And by the time we got back to New York, uh, there was an answering machine message that said, you guys got the job if you want it. Do afternoon wow. drive in Boston. I'm like, ah, cool fucking picked up and moved and went up there. So yeah, that's how, uh, uh, that's how I got into radio, uh, relatively late in the game because I was in my mid thirties, 34 at the time. Uh, and Opie is like four years younger than me. So for us to go up in our thirties to a, a alternative rock station of the time, this is when Pearl Jam and STP and all those bands were brand new. Uh, we kind of had to play it a little younger. <laughs> like we were in our twenties, okay. dude, like that's how the whole, yo dude and all that kind of <laughs> stuff. But it was, it was a tremendous, tremendously fun. So exciting for me. I was completely uh, fixated on just doing this radio thing. Nothing yeah. else mattered. Uh, my marriage, nothing else <laughs> fucking mattered. Uh, and it was, it was, it was great. And it turned into the Opie and Anthony show went off to New York uh, once we got fired from Boston for saying the mayor was dead, which started our long line of being fired thing. Like, come on. Yeah. <laughs> Just what call, the fuck? You should have called him, you know? <laughs> yeah. yeah. So we went, uh, yeah, went up to NEW and that was amazing after three years in Boston to come back home to New York, uh, a name radio show. You know, we had a huge following at that point. Um, uh, uh, great great money and I'm back home. So yeah. it was like, Oh, hi, I'm back. That was, that was easy to you put in three years. Too much right. time in Boston. Yeah. 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 Come back. Didn't have to do the whole, you know, Iowa radio station. Oh yeah. yeah like, the, like so many, like if you were going to pursue, like I wanted to be a news reporter when I was in college. And so I was like, all right, let's work on getting rid of this shitty Long Island accent. I had, a, <laughs> I had an internship at Dateline. I was like, let me get a load of Stone Phillips and see what this news life is about. And I was like, wow, he's just about the most boring person I've ever seen in my life. Like I can't do news. Um, yeah. And, and you next- have to start in those shitty small exactly. markets. Exactly. Then you have to start as far away as you can and then eventually move back to like a relevant <laughs> cities people have heard of. A real yeah. city. A real and city. <laughs> it's so funny because uh, you watch those local newscasts and you understand why those people have to cut their teeth in those small cities because um, most of them are terrible. They yeah. don't have the look. They don't have the delivery. They're stupid. They can't speak. <laughs> whatever it is. And, and then you realize, like, you get spoiled in New York, even though we do goof on our, especially our local news people here oh, in New yeah. York. They are the professionals. They're the ones that made it to New York. So whenever you're in a hotel somewhere in East Bumfuck, uh, you turn on the news and you're like, oh, boy, this is bad. But you yeah, got to like, go yeah. through that. You got to, like, you have to be the standout out of those fucking idiots uh, before you go to the next big market. It's a terrible way of life. And that is radio too. Anyone that go, get, or the way it used to be anyway, that's how you got into radio. Uh, Howard played it pretty well in private parts when he showed, you know, how people have to move around and, yeah. and do stuff like that. But uh, in the book more than the movie. It's uh, like, sometimes I would be on the road or just like out visiting family. And it's like, it's funny when you can tell just how much somebody hates being in that city, that starter city, like by their broadcast or like it's coming through, like yeah. just how much they hate like Omaha or wherever. Yeah. Yeah. Those shitty little cities that you have to make it sound important. Oh, and those PDs. <laughs> Cause even, even the station in, in uh, Boston, it was outside of Boston, the station itself. So the PD was this, he wasn't the cool hip guy pd that wbcn had in boston it was the shit kicker he came literally came from a station in nebraska to come and program our rock station in boston 
And he was just a nothing. He didn't know anything. He couldn't spot anything that was good. It was traditional. He goes, who do you, who do you think your listeners are? And me and Opie are just kind of like, I don't know. The, Men. <laughs> yeah. And they want to hear, because meanwhile, I'm just going, oh, really? Uh, Beavis and Butthead is pretty much who we had. But they don't want to hear that. <laughs> they wanted to hear like a businessman and a, a, yes, a, a woman that- professional. Yes. Yeah. Because it's all about advertising. Yeah. Yeah. And it wasn't. So he goes, I want you to clip out, get a magazine and clip out pictures of people you think are your listeners <laughs> and put them up in front of you during the show. It's like a vision board. Yeah. So, of course, me and Opie just go right on the air and disseminate his fucking bullshit meeting we oh just had. God. He gets all kinds of pissed off because they're like, oh, okay. I was like, oh, but what do you do? I go, I'm cutting a picture out of Swank right now of some <laughs> whore, and I'm going to just talk to her. That's going to be my, my P1 listener. Yeah, uh, like you're cutting out like a like a Playboy, like a centerfold or something, and you're be like, yeah. "Here she is." <laughs> yeah, here she is. Oh, it's fucking uh, uh, Charles Manson. She's listening with her whole the... body. Yeah, yeah, it, 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 but that's who you have to deal with in the business, and it gets you really frustrated um, really quickly too. Because I knew nothing about it. I just thought, "Oh, you get on mic, you talk on the radio, and then you go home, and everything's cool." And, and when I was working with Opie at BAB, I would see how pissed you would get at the. Uh, GM and the PD and stuff. And I, I used to say like, why? Like, this is the dream of dreams. How could you get mad? What's there to get mad at? And then I get to Boston and deal with that PD and everything. I'm like, oh, okay, now I kind of get it. I see yeah. why you would get frustrated. You're trying to do the best you can. And you have an asshole from Nebraska pulling the reins back on you. Yeah. I know that you and Opie have had like, obviously your troubles and, you know, uh, you know, bad relationships over the years and ups yeah. and downs. And, uh, you know, when was the, like, did you guys have, I know I heard Keith, you know, over the years being like, oh, we would love to have him on. Was there ever like a real push to try to get Opie on compounds when he was sort of in and out of shows? Uh, Keith was really big on the idea of uh, having Opie and Anthony, even if we're not together on one show have Opie and Anthony on the platform in some way because I think he was under the impression that in time there would be some kind of crossover and then maybe we'd do the show and that it just worked that way um but I mean there was no way it was going to be done uh he he has his I'm not going to sit here and trash him I, I could do that on Twitter which I do often and my <laughs> own show uh I will bash him uh but uh he's I think he's got too much, uh, you might call it pride. Like he doesn't want to work where I am the boss. Wow. Uh, he, but he also doesn't want to do the show anymore uh, or, or have any kind of, uh, he says he doesn't want to have any connection to Opie and Anthony, but he plays at the beginning of his show, it's the theme song to the ONA show. He just played the other day um, a bit from WNEW where I, me and Jimmy are in it. And he's playing wow. that as his podcast. And I'm just like, all right, you know, so that's can't be true that you don't he's want any. He's trying to push over the statues, if you will, of his past. Yeah, yeah. But but he knows that the past is the only thing that gives him any relevance. Yeah. Uh, especially now, nowadays. So he could say, I want nothing to do with it. I'm moving on. I'm going to be a different person. I'm, um, uh, what is that, re- yeah, like reinventing re myself or something. Yeah. yeah, but then he just latches on to every single thing that was the Opie and Anthony show. Even my show isn't as much the Opie and Anthony show as Opie's podcast thing he's doing is. It starts off with, you know, the Rage Against the Machine music and shit like that. And, uh, you know, whatever. I, I don't think it ever would work. It would have, it wouldn't have worked when we were still kind of talking to each other. Um, but I just, I kind of lost respect for the guy uh, during the course of the show when we were still doing the show. But I'm one of those that I could sit there for fucking 20 more years, smile, do the show. It's four hours. There's 20 more hours in the day to not have to talk to Greg Opie Hughes. <laughs> yeah. I was fine. But he's one of these that's like, dude, you, you need to call me. We need to talk. We need, you know, to, and there's no need for that. Like, like a we free meeting? Yeah. yeah, we weren't friends at that point. We were friends at the beginning. You know, we went out before the show, grabbed some lunch, 
read through the papers, talked about the news stories. We were genuine friends. And then that destructed, I think my divorce had a lot to do with it because uh, my wife and his girlfriend at the time were uh, very good friends. So that busted oh, that wow. up. He uh, had to start choosing sides. Like uh, he's, he's kind of like, oh, his girlfriend and my ex-wife are commiserating and he's got to kind of be like, oh yeah, he's the scumbag guy in order for his girlfriend not to get mad at him or something. I, I don't know. But that kind of put a lot of stress on it. Uh, my new girlfriend at the time put a lot of stress on that because he treated her like shit. So wow. I resented that. And then as time went on, uh, me and Jimmy just started Quite jibing yeah. a lot better than me and Opie did. And Opie started being left out of the bits. Uh, he, Opie was never the bit guy. It was always me. He would be the straight man. And it worked great. There's some just brilliant stuff from our early days that I still laugh at. Yeah. And he played that part great. But now with, with Jimmy there, it was the two of us. And we started getting into doing humor that was just fucking, you want to talk deplorable, <laughs> disgusting, <laughs> you know. We would laugh our ass off at the idea of a brand new bassinet, a baby bassinet uh, at the curb by the garbage because you knew there was a crib death in the oh, house. Oh, yeah, but we don't like, need we, this anymore. We don't want to yeah, talk about yeah, it. Gently just the, used. Yeah, only how, two weeks used. Like, it's still got the plastic on it like it's yeah. a stillbirth or something that bad. Uh, and we would just laugh. The, the Casey Anthony stuff and the... The, the other shit with uh, Lacey Peterson, mm -hmm. like all that shit. And the, the listeners loved it because it was twisted sick shit. Uh, <laughs> and Opie, Opie just was pulling way away from that. And uh, I think a lot of that, and this is speculation on my part. I'm not saying this is gospel. I think a lot of that had to do with um, his in-laws. I think he had family uh, in Philly that listened to the show all the time. And I think their feedback wasn't very good on the, Op on the Anthony and Jimmy stuff. And Opie wow. was always pulling back, trying to get us off the bit, going mm -hmm. to a phone call. So Wow, being that a wet blanket. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that caused a lot of tension. And uh, he, pu he put it as, you know, he's trying to move forward and, and reinvent himself and grow. But I just saw, oh, the family doesn't like what you're doing. I don't give a fuck. Uh, yeah, I, like I'm, I'm gonna, gonna grow to be it. less funny and less yeah. pro funny and less good times. Yeah, if you wanna grow, uh, Anthony Cumia and Jim Norton are not the people to grow with. <laughs> we are not gonna grow. <laughs> uh, yeah, so when I, when I got fired for my racist tirade on Twitter, which is more fucking bullshit, uh, he just did not back me up. Wow. Never went in. I, I said that if the situation was completely reversed, it was me and Jim Norton left on the show. Opie had just gotten fired. I would have gone into management uh, and said, this doesn't happen. You either get him back, you could suspend him, do whatever the fuck you want. But we are leaving. Me, Jimmy, the show are gone if you don't bring him back. Because you knew the value and you knew that you were a of team. Of course. And, um, we're a team. Yeah. We could have fucking done it. But he saw this as the perfect opportunity to get rid of, first of all, the guy that was annoying him. Mm -hmm. I, was just, I was just on his nerves all the time. Uh, everything, you know, it ended up like a boyfriend-girlfriend thing. Yeah, it sounds everything like it. Everything I was it. doing was annoying yeah. him. I wasn't calling him enough. You've never been to my house, dude. That's what he said. In all these years, uh, you've never been to my house. So I went around the room. Like, Iraq, have I ever been to your house? No. <laughs> Norton, ever been to your house? No. Nope. Mm. Travis, have I ever been to your house? No. Everybody in the whole room. Troy Kwan, ever been to your house? Nope. I never go to anyone's house. I have this house. Why would yeah. I spend time somewhere else? So almost like why, why feel rejected over something that's like doesn't have to be a rejection? Right. It's me. It's my problem. Not you. I'm the guy that doesn't go to other people's houses. I'm the guy that doesn't call. I'm the guy that doesn't fucking, if we have some kind of um, a friction between us, I'll smile, wave, go home, and the friction's gone. I don't need yeah. to have a fucking sit-down conversation every time there's, there's an issue. And, and if you've been doing radio for 20 years with someone, there's going to be an issue every fucking day. So you either have these meetings every day or you realize this is a business. This is our job. Just like I don't call the guy in the cubicle next to me at some business because he's giving me shit. You, you know what you do? You go home and you bitch about him to your fucking yeah, spouse. Yeah, just water under the bridge. Like yeah, not it's everything a coworker. has to be a thing. 
Yeah. It's a coworker at this point. You, you have plenty of people I've worked with in the air conditioning and heating business. I hated. I didn't want to sit down and chat with them about our fucking, uh, our problems together. You, you spend a few hours a day with that person. We were very successful in doing that. That's how you handle it. I, I don't need to sit down and have a cushy little fuck yeah. meeting. In the air conditioning business, you just let people cool off when they get heated. I say, right? hey, <laughs> hey, chill. Yes, exactly. <laughs> you need some Freon. <laughs> Um, how are things with Opie now? Would you guys ever consider just almost like how Mike and the Mad Dog get together once a year for a charity or to raise money? I mean, would there ever be a possibility of doing something like that? Or it's just like, eh. He's I've always said, and, and it still stands, I'm open to anything. Like if he wanted, if he called me and said, dude, look, even with all this shit, you want to like even come on his show. Hey, you want to do the podcast? I'll come come over. You do that. I'd be like, sure. Like, what do I care? First of all, why do I give a fuck if I'm talking to Opie or talking to Bob Kelly or any other person's show? You know, I know people would like to hear it. They would love to hear us sit in a room and chat, chit chat. That's why I didn't want to have our little meetings, these little fucking chit chats on the phone, because everything should just been on the air, which it was. A lot of it was was on the it air. It was all entertaining. Yeah. Yeah, people want to hear it. So yeah, I'd be over to that. He, no way. There's no fucking way. He considers me one of these horribly toxic people that he needs to burn sage to get out of his fucking life. Me, Jim Norton. By the way, every single person that we've ever worked with, I still talk to, aside, save maybe two. Wow. Two people out of, I'm talking 100 people. Uh, and, and not only talk to, are friendly with, could do, I do their shows, uh, whatever. Opie is not friends with one person that I know from the shows. They were always bullshitted when they were working with them, but I heard all kinds of shit. He would snap at interns, like mm. not snap, like, hey, you, like literally snap. He'd go, uh, like that. And it's like, uh, I actually had to say, I go, Opie, they don't, I go, I don't think they like that. And he goes, why, did someone say something? I go, no. Nobody I likes just that. don't think anyone likes when you snap at them. Uh, just remind me, uh, if, if anyone's a Sopranos fan, when Carmela was calling over um, Artie uh, Bucco's uh, wife at the house, and she goes, uh, <laughs> It was so degrading. Yeah, like, I don't know. It's worse this or a snap. Ugh. Yeah, the snap. It's degrading. Uh, he, he wasn't very good at dealing with people. He always put himself above people. He needed, like, as far as the show went, me and Jim knew we, we could just riff. We could talk. We could laugh, have a great time. And that was what we did. That was our contribution to the Opie and Anthony show, Sirius Satellite Radio, NEW, whatever the fuck it was. Opie had nothing as far as that goes. He always felt like he needed to be the guy that that ran everything. Like better than banter almost. Right, right. Yeah. Like, oh, you guys do that, but let me tell you what I do. Like he was so fearful of being exposed as not the guy that's in on the bit that he had to be the guy that went to lunch with the boss. Mm -hmm. He had to be the guy that, that went into the meeting and told the boss that maybe one of the uh, production guys weren't doing the job good enough. To and then like he the turned Karen. to the, <laughs> then he turned to the production guy and say, yeah, they were a little, uh, you know, they were a little uh, uh, hard on you and stuff. But I, I told him, you know, you'd be okay. He would shit on someone till uh. management was ready to fire them and then tell management, look, I'll work with him. Don't fire him. And then he'd come Whoa. in and go, yeah, I just saved your job, dude. Literally, Whoa. you can even do that. I, I, he did that with many people. Many people. That's like an egomaniac move. That's like, that's, yes. you have to feel power and influence. And that like was he, what it was. He didn't have it with like the quickness or the cleverness or the wit. So it's like, how else can I have power and feel influential and feel important? That yeah. was what he did. And contract negotiations were a fucking nightmare. He would want to sign these one-year deals constantly. No, I just want a one-year deal. Meanwhile, the company's like, no, you're going to do a three-year deal. And, and, and I'm going, sign a 10-year fucking deal. Yeah. First of all, if they want to get rid of you, they're going to get rid of you anyway. The contract don't mean shit. Right. Secondly, what the fuck are you waiting for? You're in your fucking 
early 50s at the time or late, late 40s, early 50s. What do you think? This new fucking station's going to hire you like you're going to get Ryan Seacrest's job? We're here at Sirius <laughs> XM Satellite Radio. Sign a 10-year fucking deal with him. A 10-year yeah. multi-gazillion dollar deal. And that's fine. He would always want one year, one year, because every year he wanted to hold it over everyone's fucking head. And he would. Every year the contract would come about. They usually would get two years. Two years, the contract would come over. And he'd be like, nope, we want this, 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 making these crazy demands. I'm like, whatever we had was fine. Just sign the fucking deal. A pay increase would be great. And and, and, uh, he wouldn't sign it. And everyone, meanwhile, I'm okay. Like, I could sit there, literally retire. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> but, but you got other guys, E-Rock, Travis, Jimmy Norton even at the time, uh, all the guys, Sam Roberts, all those guys that are sitting there on a Monday not knowing if they have a job on a Tuesday. Uh. All based on whether this fuck puts his pen to a p- piece of paper. And he loved that power. That was his two-year fucking... Uh, orgasm was was contract uh, time yeah. yeah and then and then after so much pressure literally the boss has said you sign this by 6 a.m or the deal's off the table and i'm sitting there going what the fuck are you doing and then like 559 he'd sign the paper and and everyone's stressed out this wasn't an on-air thing so it wasn't a bit he wow. would do this to fuck with every, to sh- tell everybody in so many words or actions, look, your whole life is hinging on me and Ooh. what I do. And I could fuck you in a second just by not moving my pen. That's so narcissistic. I can fuck you. Oh. Yeah, no shit. Wow. That's what we were all dealing with. And that's why no one talks to that fucking guy anymore. No who, one talks to him. Who are the two people you don't talk to anymore? Oh, uh, Danny Ross was a producer on the show. He just fucking, woo, I don't know what happened to him. He was one of my best friends Ugh. at the time. Just fucking a, a pure, it, 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 it was really one of those, um, one of those things like the fans that we were talking about earlier. Okay. He was a fan. He came on board as an intern. Wow. And it was a great time. Had a great time. He got fired from being an intern. Uh, and then, not an intern, but a production guy, because he had worked his way up to being a production guy. Me and him were great friends. Atlantic City trips with Keith and girls oh, wow. and fucking boozing. And co- it was amazing. And then just fucking the same thing. Just turned. Okay. Yeah, people just grow apart. I mean, it's pretty, yeah. okay, so him. I started having a lot of other people over that he didn't like. Hmm. It was a weird thing. Like I had uh, uh, de- all these guys that I'm still friends with to this day. All my poker buddies, Dennis and Fred and all those guys, they were all just fans of the show that we met at a softball game or a bar and hung out and talked. I'm like, oh, these people are fucking awesome. And we'd see each other again, invite to the house, this, that. Yeah. And now we've been friends for over fucking 15 years, a lot of these guys, wow. 10, 15 years. Uh, they're my best friends. Uh, and I guess he didn't like the, the competition, okay. uh, as it were. Uh, the other one, uh, let me think. Uh, it might only be one. It might <laughs> only be him. Uh, I think everyone else in, in, that we worked with, I don't really have that bad a, a business. Oh, uh, at Compound Media, there's a couple of people that I just like fucking, uh, one you mentioned earlier, I will never say his fucking name, uh, that used to work there. Okay, okay. And then, and then, uh, What's his name? Fucking uh, Brennan. <laughs> Kevin Brennan. Like Brennan, I gave I gave Kevin so much the benefit of the doubt over the years. I always have. I'm not going to shit talk him here. Um, uh, I always thought he was very funny, but he's just he really doesn't know how to be friendly. <laughs> There's no real uh, loyalty either. There's like yeah. there should be a loyalty thing to a a business relationship in some way. And I'm not yeah. talking about a one-way loyalty where you shit on someone and they're expected to be great to you or vice versa. You know, there was just always this thing where he'd shit on Keith and shit on the company and stuff like that. And I would, anytime I saw him, treat him great and, you know, compliment him, just compliment him to other people because he's a very funny comic. And, uh, you know, that. but I don't put him in the category of people I, you know, have no want or need to see or yeah. talk to. It sounds like you and Keith were always 
you know, from what I hear, heard from Keith, like as accommodating as could be, communication very yeah, open yeah. and so. It's weird because it is, you know, we talked about it earlier about the fans. There's also an aspect of it where it's a business with the comics. And and it's it's a weird thing because I would love to just fucking make it rain on the fucking everyone that's doing a show. Let's make it rain. But it is a business. You know, I've set myself up so that I'm not a Walmart greeter at 70 years old. Like I've, I've had to would, set myself up. You would up be the way. best Walmart greeter though. Wouldn't I be awesome? <laughs> You'd be like, oh, I, wow, nice baby yeah. carriage. That one's uh, gently used, but it's a good yeah. one. <laughs> <laughs> People would love it. But I, I, I've made sure over the years that uh, I, I will be comfortable uh, and not be, like I said, a, a Walmart creator. Yeah, you got to take uh, care of yourself. So I can't just, the business has to run itself. And I can't just shell money out because I have a nice house and a pool and, and money. I can't just throw it out to, to make the business go. It's got to be self-sufficient. Uh, because I, I need that money, again, to, live. to not be a Walmart greeter. <laughs> uh, and and uh, on that end of it, we try to do things to make it more successful. And as we do, and as we make more money, we can hire more people. We can uh, uh, pay people better, give raises, things like that. But uh, it's relatively young. We're six years into it. We're doing very well. And, uh, you know, we continue. We want to continue doing that. So, uh yeah, people don't really understand that side of the business either. Uh, and I and I think uh, I think uh, Kevin, you know, had issues with that, with some of the things. It's it is a business, and it's got to be run as such. And you know, Kevin, it's not like we're the first people Kevin's ever had a problem with either. Let's put it that way. <laughs> it's not like wow, what an anomaly. Kevin's got an issue. Uh, you know, it says here Kevin does not play well with others. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he would absolutely get that on the report card. Yeah. But, you know, I think, you know, everyone that's there's a lot of pride that you can have in the in the talent that has come out of and is still in oh, yeah. compound media. You know, Gavin, the Legion of Skanks, you know. Yeah. And yeah. And also and um, just like the growth over, you know, it's like we're it's a small company. It's uh, but yeah, the, the shows have been so great. And anytime anybody gets, you know, attention outside. That's why I always think like, oh, if I can you know, go viral for giving Chrissy Teigen a yeah. mental breakdown and it gets a few more people over the network. Um, exactly. Yeah. And I, I, I get that 100%. I love it. And, and it's, there will never be an instance where anything is said that will be like, uh-oh, uh-oh, somebody said, yeah. no, anything goes. And there has been such a demand for that, especially now. Every day it gets more and more because we're just being we're being cut off from entertainment that people want. The majority of people want. Uh, we're, we're, we're getting shit that's been, been filtered. Uh, we're getting comedy that is uh, fearful. It's like people are afraid to say what they want to so say. It's so tentative. And, yeah. Um, yeah. And I think there, I forget what the list was, but there's some list that you can check like, this is more in terms of news, like honesty, uh, but like the USA was like way down. And like, I guess it's basically a way to see like the, how fake the, the news is in uh -huh. each country. And like the US was like, we were down there. You know, it's we, gotta be. the level of honesty in our news is, is, is way, way down there. And um, comedy is one of the few ways now people are getting their news through comedians. But it's like, it's also just you know, everyone talks about cancel culture, but it's ultimately, I think, the most selfish act to tell people that they can't enjoy what they enjoy and that they can't, you know, they're not allowed or don't deserve to laugh yeah. at what they find funny. It's, it, it, it angers me when comics and entertainers have to bow down. Uh, you know, there's some very funny comics that have to talk about their older material and just, they have to burn it. They have to sit mm -hmm. there and talk about how sorry they are for saying it and how, you know, I, I would never do that today. And I realize now that that was hurtful. And here's what I honestly believe. They don't think that. They, and they don't. They loved it. And the people they thought don't care. It was, yeah. And the people don't care. They thought it was hilariously funny at the time. They still do. They're proud of it. It worked in front of crowds. It still would work in front of crowds. But they have to do that. And, and I can't even be mad at them. 
They don't all have a place to go that's going to not fuck them. You know, there are comedy clubs, plenty of them, that'll go, yeah, we just uh, can't have you on. You, you know, you didn't denounce your old material uh, in that way. Uh, it's, it's in every part of our entertainment business now. And uh, I have no respect for anybody that, that would kneel down and, and shit all over everything that made them who they are, what they are, uh, in order to, to what, save face? Try, yeah. to, try to, to ingratiate yourself with a mob of fucking mental patients that, yeah. that aren't going to give you a gig anyway? It's exactly yeah. like 1984. I said it so many times. Fucking Winston in 1984, he, he fucks that girl with the big hairy bush if you watch the movie. <laughs> and... and <laughs> That and was then, the first sign of danger. <laughs> right. They catch him and they're like, now why don't you just kill him? No, no. You need to have that guy know that he fuck, fucked up. He was wrong. And not just say I fucked up. And not just say you love big brother or whatever it is. You have to mean it. When he's holding up, the guy's holding up, how many fingers am I holding up? And he goes three. And he just jolts the guy. And he goes, and the guy's crying. He goes, I want to see four. He goes, no, it's not three fingers. It's four fingers. Then the guy, he's crying and spitting and he's shocked. He goes, oh my God. He goes, I want to see four. I just can't. And then at the end, he saw four fucking fingers and he loved Big Brother and he was sorry about what he did. And that's when they kill you. That in 1984, that's when they kill you because they don't want a martyr. They've broken you and they don't want a martyr. They don't want somebody that really is. Uh, somebody that hates it or that and that's what they're doing now they want you to accept this cancel culture and political correctness and social justice and really fucking mean it and then they'll kill you because you're still not getting the gig you're still not going on your merry way you are fucked it's Uh, not about the apology it's about making you look bad and, and not credible and like why, why should anybody have to apologize for their past? Like, why are we apologizing for growing as crazy. people? Like, Jimmy Fallon, the most, like, milk toast, oh, <laughs> lovable God. dude, has to apologize for his Chris Rock impression, which is what it was, first and foremost, not blackface. And then it's like, we're going to cancel. Spot on, funny, too. Yeah, cancel this episode of the Golden Girls because they had mud masks on. And it's like, the apology is never enough. They want your spirit broken and you your business gone and yeah uh, the just, whole history has to be wiped yeah. out it's it's so stalinist it's so gross it's like oh yeah. just because you can't create something for yourself it's like if you see an absence of something in comedy or any other industry it's like you work to create it like you're not yeah. creating anything by by tearing other people down and just destroying it. you're just making less stuff i i saw something when uh, they were talking about the uh, washington redskins changing their their logo and name, which they've decided they are going to do. Um, wow. that, that this woman wrote this article that said the, the Texas Rangers, which is the baseball team down there in Texas, the Texas Rangers have to change their name. And, and this woman, and it's like, and then I read, I read it. Yeah, I read it. The Texas Rangers were law enforcement in Texas from a long time ago. They have a storied history in Texas. Texans are very proud of the Texas Rangers. It's a law enforcement um, organization that is uh, amongst the best in the country, very respected. And she said that you might as well have called it the Texas Klansmen, because back in the day, the Texas Rangers would ride their horses and, and spread racism and lynchings and all this stuff. And it's like, all right, first of all, I don't know the history. I just know it's a baseball team. I know Walker, Texas Ranger uh, is the TV show with Chuck Norris. It doesn't seem that bad. Uh, This woman, I know what she did. She saw that Washington Redskins uh, Redskins were going to change the name and said, let me look through every fucking baseball team, team, football team name, and and I'm going to try so hard to come up with something about one of these teams. So she can feel important. uh, Right. So she's like, Texas Rangers, what does that mean? And then she looks and goes, oh, they're law enforcement. They got to be bad. They're named after law enforcement. Yeah, Let's call them now. racist yeah. and sexist and homophobic and say that that's got to be. They're, people are trying way too hard to be so offended that they need to cancel something. 
They're out yeah. looking for it. Their purpose in life is to look for it. Pull open a rock, under a rock, look behind fucking walls. They don't even want it to jump out at you anymore. They don't even want it to offend the rest of the world. They want to find it and go, oh, that's offensive. It was under a rock. Would you it was turn fine. rock over yeah. for it? It was fine. No one was offended by it. Like, so that's a, what they're the, doing. The Texas range, you know, like the cooking range. <laughs> like right. How about a ranger? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. A, a range. <laughs> but now they're changing. Uh, I guess they want to go with warriors, which oh. seems very, very um, violent to me. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Vikings are going to be a problem because of the, the, you know, Nordic Vikings conquering and things like that. You could literally pick any team and just concoct some reason. Yeah. Let's why just it's rename all of our teams after losers instead of groups yeah. of people who have won or, won. or conquered something. A chief, a yeah. Kansas City, a chief, uh, 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 you know, things like that. They, they, they don't seem to understand that they're, it's a respectful thing. It's uh, somebody that you believe is powerful. They call it the fucking pussies. They call yeah. it, you know, the, the, we've, we've collectively lost our minds. Or like the Texas Karens. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's the, new, that's the new racist thing to say that isn't racist because it's only for white women. Yeah, yeah. It's well, sexist and mm -hmm. racist, as a matter of fact. Yeah, it really is. And it's uh, racist against short hairstyles. You know, there's yes. so much that's hurtful about that. Sensible hair. <laughs> you know, when a woman decides she's not, she doesn't have to uh, impress a man anymore because her husband uh, is married and they have kids. She could do that <laughs> sensible hair thing. Mm -hmm. I could wash it so fast and get those kids off to school now. I just run my fingers through it and I'm ready to go. <laughs> I had it's that so hair, great. nobody would talk to me. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. I saw some pictures. Of, I saw some pictures of you. Uh, you. You posted them, so I guess they're yeah. safe. <laughs> but you, uh, you had dark hair, I guess. Yeah, I've had dark hair at one point. I had like shorter blonde hair. Blonde hair, right. A little uh, like a, a European spy. Yeah, I'll have to <laughs> post pictures of my like very short hair and braces and uh, overweight face. Oh my God, you sound like um, you'd come out of a Wayfair cabinet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, I was laughing so hard at, at your show today with, um, uh, what was it like? With, oh yeah, with like um, the the kid of the guy and you, and you said like- uh, Oh, Bobby like Kelly. Bobby, yeah, <laughs> Bobby, you were like, he's gonna be in a credenza. <laughs> yeah, credenza. <laughs> yeah, Bobby's kid, he's adorable, yeah. he's a great kid. He's cute. He, he comes out, he, he was in the pool, so he didn't have his shirt on. And Bobby's yeah. like, get out of here. He goes, you don't know these people. He's like, oh, yeah, he's, he's going to be in a fucking $60,000 credenza on Wayfair. That's a weird story, too. And it's oh, like, yeah. there's all kinds of weirdness there, but no one, no mainstream media talks about I know, it. No, it was debunked by Wayfair. What a relief. By Wayfair, again. I, when people say, well, it's got to be fake, the news isn't picking up on it. Wouldn't the news even pick up on it as a thing that's fake? Like, yeah. like you think it would be a story that they go, and by the way, Wayfair is in the news now. People are seeing these weird things. But we did an investigation and found out here's what it is. Like, they're yeah. not even doing that. No. That would have been something you would do as a journalist. Go, hey, what's in the news? Well, everyone's talking about this Wayfair thing. Oh, why? Oh, look into it. Yeah. Oh, why? Because you think it's pedophile? No, but look into why people think it is that. Oh, okay. No, they just leave it alone and the fucking, the thing perpetuates itself. It's and crazy. And the fact that there, there's people out there still who believe that, that our news is bringing us the most important issues oh, of the day oh, is so God. sad and heartbreaking. It's like, oh, no, honey. No, that's not, that's not. You know why they here. think that? They think that because the news told them that. Like, I always laughed when, because uh, growing up as a kid, we just had local news. It wasn't, a, and they're very proud of their local news, oh, especially yeah. back then. Channel 2, 4, and 7, ABC, NBC, CBS were, were in competition to get your your eyes on their station at six o'clock when the news came on. And uh, it was the same fuck news, same exact news on every channel. Uh, so they weren't doing anything different, but they had to tell you the most trusted team in news. And you're like, but you're telling us that. No one else <laughs> ever told me that NBC News was the most trusted news except NBC News. Why the fuck am I believing you? Because CBS News just told me they're the most trusted it's news. It's like every place in New York City saying <laughs> that they're the best pizza. Right. No, best pizza in New York. Number one yeah. pizza. Well, only you told me that. 
<laughs> and yeah. when the news tells you that they're the most trusted, uh, I assure you they're lying to you. Yeah, it's like, we're the best parents. No, we're the yeah. only parents you're going to have. Yeah. I don't know. Bad metaphor. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, I, it gets, this world gets crazier. Or is it the world or the country? Because I noticed, I noticed the world doesn't even exist anymore. There's no more world news. Before yeah. COVID and, and the Black Lives Matter thing, like everything was about Syria and Libya and yeah. China and Russia and the Ukraine. All this shit, uh, Brexit and fucking right. the European Union and Angela Merkel, all this shit, stop dead. I have not heard an iota yeah. of news from the faraway continent uh, across the pond. Nothing. Everything stopped. So is it just us that's lost our fuck minds? I think it's just us. I think, <laughs> I think the powers that be would like us to... Um, you know, sort of marinate on racism uh, until November and then maybe- <laughs> Yeah, we'll yeah. Yeah. I do have a, a prediction that after the November election, this all just, the brakes go on it immediately. And, and regardless of who wins, by the way, I think even if Trump mm -hmm. wins that they won't, it's not gonna be a thing like, well, we gotta keep this going because it doesn't have a purpose at that point. Right. Um, and, and they've proven that it doesn't help fuck Trump up if Trump wins. If, uh, but they'll stop all the shenanigans as far as the riots and the police shit mm -hmm. and that, but it will go right back to, hey, we gotta get Trump thrown out. So we'll hear again about Russia and, and the Ukraine and all that fun stuff uh, to try to get him to not complete his four years yeah. uh, for the next term. Uh, but all this shit will stop. You won't hear about COVID. I say by, by the summer of next year, we're mm. going to, like, you're going to open up your glove compartment and find a mask and, and go, oh, mask. fuck, dude. Dude, remember this? Remember this? <laughs> yeah. People are already over it. Like, it's like you can't, <laughs> there's no new combination of threats or warnings that are going to make the average person, like, rethink the whole thing. No, no. Yeah, but the that's... fucked up thing is the government are the ones that are in uh, 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 they're implementing the, these restrictions on people, even though most people now are just like, I've had it, fuck this, I don't even care anymore. You know, this, by the way, is the same mindset that they got the soldiers that stormed Normandy into. Like, you wow. just got, you get into the mindset of, fuck this, I don't care. I don't care if I get COVID. I'm yeah. just done with this. I've had it, I'm done with this. Ah! And you run out of the fucking landing <laughs> crap. That's yeah. what they need, that's the mindset you need to, to do that. We're in that mindset with COVID. I don't care anymore. Fuck it. I don't care about grandma. I don't care about yeah. anybody. Yeah. Fuck this. We need to get back to where we are. I tried to sit out on the goddamn street in front of Sullivan's the other day and enjoy a cheeseburger. I had a heroin addict yelling at the garbage man uh, right next to me. I'm disgusted. Uh, there's a reason there's buildings with doors on them for yeah. restaurants. It's like I've really appreciated walls in a way that I hadn't before. Right. Yes. You know, like, oh, this is nice. It keeps people out. You know, there's inside. a reason. <laughs> there's a reason restaurants have walls and yeah. a door. It's, it's so to keep doesn't... that fuck out. Yes, yeah, so you don't get stabbed in the neck <laughs> in the middle of your meal. <laughs> Trying to eat a cheeseburger on the street. <laughs> it was terrible. I thought I'd help Sullivan's out, a local place. We yeah. we go there every so often. Uh, local business and you just can't do it it's it's too fucking disgusting out in the streets Ugh, yeah i hate it <sighs> we'll see what happens it'll be interesting yes, yes we um, will <laughs> i mean i feel like we keep talking but i have to that's fine we're gonna yeah. wrap this up anthony right. where can people find you <laughs> well chrissy uh <laughs> compoundmedia.com myself and mr dave landau do a program monday through thursday from 4 p.m to 6 p.m uh, Eastern time. So uh, you could catch us there with a lot of other very funny shows, including <laughs> Chrissy Mayer. Including and her in wet hot water. Spots. No. <laughs> yeah, in hot, in hot water is very funny. Yes. <laughs> they are um, completely off the rails. I love them. <laughs> yeah, good stuff. Anthony, so, thank you so much for coming on the show. Thanks, Everybody, Chrissy. if you're not uh, subscribed to Compound Media, do so immediately. I think if you use the code WETSPOT20, you get 20% off of your subscription. Yes. Follow everybody. Um, thank you so much, Anthony. Thank you, Chrissy. See you soon. See you soon. Bye.